looking ahead on, under long finance, I, I mentioned the, um, our four various programs that are going, and I would encourage all of you, as ever, uh, to, to go on to the website. You'll see as well um, a tremendous number of free publications are up there, and I would encourage you as well to visit the Tomorrow City section of the site, which has those 30 reports, which I mentioned to you. In terms of forthcoming events, uh, we have our 26th of March Steady As She Goes Long-Term Performance Measurement Conference. Um, that's got a raft of very, very powerful speakers. Um, Susan Rice is going to be talking there, Anthony Heen from GMO. I think you'll get some really interesting views on uh, what we can do in finance to look over the longer term. We're working on a few publications, but forthcoming will be our Global Financial Centers Index in, in mid-late March. Um, and then I guess in terms of specific events on cities, there are uh, a couple of events uh, coming up. Uh, Tomorrow City Infrastructure Forum, uh, Base London. So sort of um, in conclusion, um, I have a, a lot of thanks to give. So many people assisted today uh, from Mansion House to the staff of Gresham College uh, to my team at Zien. I, I, I just simply can't enumerate everyone. It, it really has been wonderful. Um, and I think just a few closing words. Uh, uh, you know, what did we learn today? Well, you know, cities are tough to... Define, and we have numerous choices on what is some kind of key determinant, although we did seem, I think, to focus on people. And one of my favorite city measurement trivia problems is to point to the planet-moon uh, configuration of Bremen and Bremerhaven, which is sort of the solar system of Germany's smallest land, which is, uh, which is Bremen. Uh, it's the tiniest of the 16 lender. Um, it's 56 kilometers apart between the two cities, uh, yet they have their own constitutions. Their land has a number of unique opt-outs in the German, German federal system, particularly to schools and police. And just to ensure confusion, Bremen even owns bits of the port of Bremerhaven. So, you know, it's mind-bending when you, when you try and do that kind of analysis. The Lord Mayor mentioned that uh, Crosby advocates an interesting thesis on why a bunch of tiny squabbling nations on the fringe of a continent with few outstanding resources and having squandered centuries of their own sweet time emerging um, from, from their own uh, loss of empire in the 5th century managed to take on and dominate some of these massive eastern empires from 1500 until uh, the end of the century. Uh, these interesting bit there, though, is Crosby's pointing out that these fragmented and competing city-states actually were a source of strength and not weakness, so I think very much playing to Tony's point about collaboration and competition uh, being there. And that uh, I think as well beneath all of that, it was also having to handle a diversity of approaches to metrology actually made them strong. There were differences in the length of the standard L. I had a great time in a museum last year that my wife Elizabeth took me to where we saw 800 standard Ls, each one standardly different, mm -hmm. um, which I thought was great. So all these different weights and measures, different coinages, all led to a better facility and understanding of measurement. And for Crosby, uh, the West's focus on measurement was fundamental to our success. And it's clear we need to master measurement of our cities. And yet, um, uh, something that I, I think the dog that didn't bark today was the tension between uh, planning uh, and unplanning. Uh, you know, we mustn't overmeasure. We have to leave room for serendipity. Uh, I opened today's symposium with a Jane Jacobs quote, cities have the capability of providing something for everybody only because and only when they are created by everybody, but implicit in her quote is the tension between planning and innovation. Uh, too much planning could lead to a tragedy of the commonwealth of data. Uh, the best cities capture the vitality of their historic roots and combine the old with the new, and they harness that vitality within their population. And Tony alluded to the almost uh, growing up means being a little bit more balanced as cities. So these great metropolises are, are, are very much about everybody's contribution. And thus, they are really a, a, as much accident as design. Um, I'd remind you that uh, London was actually right, in my opinion, after the 1666 fire, to reject Sir Christopher Wren's grandiose scheme for a boulevarded London. Uh, with too much planning, innovation does wander elsewhere. And the haphazard and serendipity in today's cities, to me, is actually part of what creates the opportunities. The Lord Mayor also touched on commonwealth. Uh, commonwealth is a 15th century term, meaning public welfare, general good or advantage. So the commonwealth or the common wheel comes from an old meaning of wealth, not money, uh, but well-being. And thus it means really common well-being. 
So if we want to live well in cities, what does that commonwealth depend? Well, I think the Lord Mayor made a very strong suggestion that our common weal might be in our data. And for me, that was one of the great points she made. Uh, we should combine her clock metaphor and her data hydrant metaphor. We start with community, which leads to commerce. And after we've generated some wealth, we turn to charity, building a just society. But our wealth is founded on what we share, which starts with data, then information, then knowledge, and as she suggested, um, perhaps wisdom. So uh, I'll leave all of you with some of those thoughts today. We end, as ever in Gresham, pretty much on time, I think. Uh, and I'd like to thank all of you for your attention and contributions today and look forward to seeing you at many, many events in the future. Thank you. Thank you.